Well, good morning, church family. I got to say, this is a, this is definitely a first for me. I'm, it's only my second sermon here, and I've already driven everybody away. There's nobody in here. No, I'm just kidding. That it's really good to be here this morning. I hope you all are staying safe at home, and hope you are all you are all uh, just doing what is necessary to keep you and your family safe. And I'm glad you're here to worship with us this morning. But yeah, I miss you all. I've been missing the youth. I've been missing worshiping with you guys on Sunday mornings and worshiping with the youth on Wednesday nights. I've missed having movie nights with the youth on Thursdays. It's really been a trying time for me to be separated from everyone and not be able to see them. But I got kind of, it's kind of ironic. I kind of have the perfect test, text today for what I've been going through. And I, I didn't even plan, we didn't even plan for it to be this way. I mean, we didn't, none of us knew COVID-19 was coming. And none of us knew what was going to be happening with this pandemic. And even as I was planning for it, we didn't even know how bad COVID-19 would get. But yet, this text just seems to be a perfect timing from the Lord. It just seems to be perfect for what we are going through and what I was experiencing, particularly this week, where I was being separated from you all physically. But I'm going to go ahead and read the text, and I'm going to talk about it a bit. Um, if you guys have been following along with our Ephesians series, you know that we're now in Ephesians 4, the beginning of chapter 4. I'm going to start, and I'm going to read through verses 1 through 6 in Ephesians chapter 4. It says this, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you for this text this morning where it's talking about us being unified as one body. And God, that might be a challenge for many of us right now. I know it was a challenge for me this week being separated from my church family and being separated from everybody. But God, I pray that you will empower us to continue to be unified through this trying time and that we will continue to be truly be one body working in unison. And God, I pray that you just uh, speak your words through this text and that you will be glorified in what is said and done. In Jesus' name, amen. So as you guys have been following along with our Ephesians series, you've seen us talk a lot about, and Paul talk a lot about what God has done for us and how he has freed us from our old lives and freed us from the, our dark past and allow us, allows us to live this new life in Christ. But now Paul is going to switch starting in chapter 4 and going through the rest of the chapter. He's going to switch to saying how we should respond to this gift that God has given us. He's going, to, he's going to start off in chapter 4 saying that we, he's urging us to live a life worthy of the calling we have received. And I could preach a whole sermon on this, but just, I'm just going to touch on it. But I believe it's important to know that every person in the church has a calling. And a lot of people like to think it's only the ministers like me, Jason, and Doug who just have callings. But, ev but every person has a calling. We are all, we all have a calling. We are all called to go and do ministry. It might not be full-time vocational ministry like me and Jason and Doug do, but we are all called to go and do ministry to fulfill the mission that Jesus has placed upon our lives. And we are all called to go and do that. And I believe this is important for people to realize because so often today we live in a world where people are saying, oh, you're, you, just, you were just a creation out of dust. You were just a creation out of of chance. We're just, a, we just, we're just a jumble coming from a big bang, mm -hmm. and we don't have any purpose. But guys, we do have a purpose. We have an ultimate purpose. We have a purpose for what God has called us for. And we're going to be talking a lot about that as we go through the rest of the book of Ephesians. We're going to be talking about this calling that God has placed upon our lives and how we are to respond to that calling. But this week, I'm going to be focusing on one aspect of that calling, and that is unity and being unified. And I believe this is such an important message for us today as we are all being separated physically and being separated from each other. And it's been a challenge for me to continue to be unified despite, because of this physical separation. And I believe this is such an important text for us to read and for us to study and for us to realize that COVID-19 is not going to stop us from being unified. And that if we are unified through it, we will come out stronger than ever. 
But as we read the Bible, we see constantly how important unity is. I mean, the night before Jesus is crucified, for example, um, he's, in the, he's in the garden praying, and we see many things in his prayer, but I'm sure one, the one thing you all remember is after he gets done praying for the disciples, he starts praying for all of us, all of us who would come to know him through the disciples' teachings. And it's the first thing he prays for right off the bat for us. He, said, he says this, and this is in John chapter 17, as many of you know, starting in verse 20. It says, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also, may, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Now, we all know what Jesus was going to face that next morning after he prayed that prayer. We all know he, he knew, and he knew he was going to face the cross, probably the one most painful way to die in all of human creation. And we all know that's what Jesus was going to. Not only that, as Jason talked about before, he experienced separation from God during the cross. And we all know what he was about to face, but yet he took the time to pray for us, pray for us who would believe through his disciples. And, there, and the first thing he prays for is that we would be one, that we would be unified. But not only that, we also see in the text that we have today that Paul, being a prisoner, and most likely, he, he's, mo he's most likely assuming that he's going to face death eventually for the Christian faith, but him being a prisoner and in this dire situation of being a prisoner, he too urges the church to be unified. His, the beginning of his, what he might assume to be his last words was that we would be unified, that we would keep the unity of the Spirit. But as you can see, Paul and Jesus both thought this was something that the, church, that the church needed. We needed to be unified, and they showed how dire that situation was and how much it is needed for us. And the, and the Bible's pretty clear about that, how clear, how, how necessary unification is. And yet so often today we see that churches around the world, not just churches like we have here, but churches all over, all together, we see that they would rather do things like debate theology rather than worship together. They would rather debate politics than come before the throne together. They would rather live a life in the world before they live a life together in the kingdom. But we know that is not how the church will be successful. We know that is not the path we need to take. And especially now with coronavirus ravaging the country and ravaging the world, we need to be unified now more than ever. And it might not seem like it's possible, but Paul gives many reasons why unification is possible despite our differences, despite, our, despite anything that is happening in our lives. And one of those reasons, and as you can see through the text, I'm going to read it again. But he talks about how we are one body he says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope when you were called. We are one body, and I'm sure that's something that the church hears so, I mean, that's the something the church hears so often, oh, we're one body. But yet I feel like we've almost lost the meaning of what that, what that truly ha means for our lives. Going into, I'm sure many of you know the one body passage where, where we first read about it. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm sure many of you have read this passage before or heard this passage preached to you. And I, but I just want to really want you guys to read it again and just really understand what it means and how important it is that we are one body despite what is happening in our country currently. Starting in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, it says, Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit, as to form one body. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink. And as Paul, Paul's going to go, Paul will go on to talk about how the body does have many different parts, but yet, despite it having many different parts, I'm not going to talk about all those different parts today. That could be a whole other sermon, but I'm going to talk about how despite us all being different and all of us having different beliefs, Jews and Gentiles, they had vastly different beliefs if you read the Bible. They'd, they, they, that was, kind of, was a big frustration in the early church. But yet, despite our differences, despite our differences in beliefs, they were unified by one body. They were one body, and they were all, they were all one body baptized together to form one body baptized by the Spirit. And a body, as you guys know, a human body cannot work cannot work unless it is working in unison. We have so many different parts of our body. We have 
the brain system, we have the nervous system, we have the skeletal structure, we have the muscular system, and each one of those parts, while they do a crucial task, cannot form, cannot, cannot do what the body needs to be done unless they are working in unison. For example, the body cannot move if it has a brain but no muscular skeletal structure in order to make it move. Just the same, the skeletal muscular structure cannot move on its own unless it has a brain telling its a brain system telling it what to do and how to move. The body must work together in order to perform properly. And that is the same for the church body. We need to work together. We need to help each other. We need to function as one if we are going to function properly, if we are going to function well, if we are going to work well together and, and fulfill the mission that God has placed upon the church body. But yet so often we're not working together. So often we're de- we'd rather, as I talked about before, debate with each other and debate, what, and debate what is right and wrong and what is theologically right and wrong rather than be unified as one body. But could you imagine what the church is in the, Mo- in the Des Moines area if we all work together during this time, if we all put aside our theological differences, if we all put aside our political differences, if we all put that aside and realize that we are one body, could you imagine what the Des Moines area if ever, could do if every single church worked together during this coronavirus outbreak? Could you imagine what we would be able to do for people? We'd be, we would see the needs of our community. We would see people who are without work because of the virus. We would see people who don't have enough food. We would see people who are without something so simple like toilet paper. I mean, that, that toilet paper th- thing is just crazy right now. I mean, I was down to a roll just last week, and, not, and luckily the church was here to give me more because I didn't know, know, I did not know what I was going to do. But if we would see all these people who have needs because of this virus, and we would be able to meet those needs because we are working as one body. And yet we don't do that because we let our differences in politics, our differences in theology separate us from fulfilling that need. I remember when I was in uh, Joplin, Missouri, that I'm sure many of you heard about the giant tornado that went through Joplin, Missouri years ago in 2012, I believe it was. And I, that when I went to school, I ended up going to school in 2015, and three years later, there was still significant damage in the community. The tornado was very bad. But one thing I consistently heard was that every, almost every single church in the Joplin area set aside their theological and their political differences and worked together to help the community. And because of that, the churches in Joplin grew exponentially. If we could put aside our differences and just work as the church should and, and see people how Jesus wants us to see them and work together, we could really change lives and we could bring people into the church. But we need not only be one body with outside churches, but we need to continue to be one body within our church here at Woodland Hills. I mean, like I said, I've been missing you guys more and more as the weeks went on, as these, because this quarantine went on, went on. I missed worshiping with you in person. I missed all of that. But yet we need to continue to be unified how we can. We might not, obviously it's not going to be in fit and physical seeing each other. It's not going to be us truly being with one another physically. But we're, we need to continue to be unified despite the virus. We need to continue to be unified as we can, whether it's through technology, whether it's through um, Facebook or it's through any of these other things. That there, there's something that the youth group's going to be trying called Zoom where we meet together over Zoom. But we need to continue to be unified despite us not being able to be physically together. Because guys, if we are unified, if we are one body throughout this coronavirus, we are not going to see a decline in the church. Rather, after we get through this, we are going to see the church grow exponentially. We need to be unified during this time. We are going to be stronger because of it. So let us be unified during this virus outbreak. Let us continue to work together. Let us see the needs that we have, with the needs that other people in our church have. Let us see whether it's somebody who, who is out of a job currently because of the virus. Let us see how we can help them. Whether it's somebody who doesn't have food right now because of the shot, because the stores are out. Let us see how we can feed them. Whether it's somebody who's out of toilet paper like I was and the church so graciously gave me a pack. Let us see how we can surrender surrender our, our finances or even our toilet paper to them. Let us see how we can help each other as one body. Let us see what our needs and let us work together. But Paul goes on to give another reason for why the church can be unified in this in this passage in Ephesians. And he goes on, it's in the last verse, and I believe, but it's, I believe it's one of the most important verses. It says, one God and Father of all, who is over all, who is over all and through all and in all. That's verse 6 
Ephesians 4, chapter 4. But guys, we all have the same God, and we can be unified with other churches and other people, and other Christians during this time because we worship the same God. And granted, there are, there are denominations out there that make up their make up God how they want to be, and obviously they're not worshiping the same God. I like to think of the denomination, the PCUSA. I'm sure many of you have heard of this denomination. If not, um, they're they're a Presbyterian denomination who recently has changed their bylaws to say uh, Jesus is a way to God, not the way to God. And obviously, and um, obviously, there's churches. There's a lot of churches that have left that denomination because they said that because that one little difference in a word, but as many of you know, Jesus is the way to God. And because of that, though, there was another denomination born, another Presbyterian denomination board called ECO, Evangelical Covenant Order. And these people formed, a lot of this, this denomination grew exponentially because there's people leaving the Peace USA because of what they said about God and what they said about his son. And yet those and yet we know those people in Eco, while yes, we have many different theological beliefs in them, they still worship the same God. They still believe Jesus to be the way to God and the only way to God. And they worship the same God as, God as us. And despite our theological differences, we can worship with them. We can be one body with them because we worship the same God. However, this has been an issue in the church since the beginning. Despite having the same God, there's been there's been... Since the beginning of the church, there's been people who have not accepted one another, who have not loved one another, and who have not worshipped together because of their differences. As I mentioned before, the Jews and Gentiles in the early church, these people, these two groups could not get along despite worshipping the same God. They had very different theology, I, I think that's the best way to put it, and, they, and then they, the Jewish people struggled to accept the Gentile people. They believed, the, they believed themselves to be above the Gentile people and to be greater. And so they were, they, they, unification was just not, go, was not possible with them. They continually debated with each other, they continually hated one another rather than be one body united under worship of the one God, the one true God. And this led to Paul and Peter and a bunch of other people writing to them saying, you guys need to be unified. And he, they it even took, it even led to them, them saying, listen, Jewish people are not above Gentile people. We have all fallen short of the glory of God, and we all need God, and we are all worship the same God. We all are worship the same God, and we need to be unified under that, especially during this trying time. We might have different differences in theology. We might have difference in politics, but we worship the one true God. This reminds me of when I would fight with my brother and sisters when I was younger, and <laughs> thinking back on some of the fights we had, I just remember how stupid they were, like... We used to fight over who got to sit in the front seat of the car whenever my dad and my mom drove us anywhere. And it, this, these fights would just lead to such stupidity. We would, we, we would we'd be fighting over who gets to sit in the front seat of the car, and then all of a sudden it would lead to one of us saying, oh, I'm never going to talk to you again. I'm never going to talk to you again. You took the front seat from me. I, you're a terrible brother. You're a terrible sister. And these fights would derail into arguments that would lead us to saying things like, oh, you're, a ter you're terrible. Oh, I'm never going to talk to you again. And they simply tell us something so dumb and so stupid. And it just, it just reminds me of how, I mean, obviously we would end up talking to each other again. And that never actually led to us ignoring each other. That would be really dumb. But this is just what the Jewish and Gentile people went through. They, they would argue and say, oh, I'm greater than you. Oh, you are lesser to me because I am, the, I am God's true people. Oh, yeah, you, you, can have God, you, can, you can be part of the church, but you need to realize that I am greater than you. But no, we, they, the Jewish and Gentile people had to come to the realization that they worship the one true God. They worship the same God and that they are united because of that. And we need to realize that with the churches around us today that we, that, we, that we don't, that we debate with and that we have theological differences with. We worship the same God and we need to be unified under that now more than ever. But that's easier said than done. And Paul talks a lot about how we can do this in Ephesians chapter 4. And it's easier said than done to be unified despite our theological differences. I know there's people who have very different political stances and very different theological stances than me. And I struggle to accept them and struggle to be unified with them despite these differences. But Paul says this is going to be a struggle. He goes on to say, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. He says it's going to be an effort. We are going to have to work for it. We are going to have to work towards it. It's going to be something we have to work for. 
And the reason it's such a struggle is people, so often we have differences in um, beliefs. We struggle, we struggle because we think that people who hold different beliefs than us are wrong and therefore less than us. I know I've struggled with this before. I remember when I first became a Christian, I had a friend named Nick, and Nick, I found out after I became a Christian, was an atheist. And I felt the need that because he was an atheist and because I was a born-again Christian so, so recently that I needed to defend God to him. And I'm sure many of you know that doesn't always work out too well, but I felt the need to defend, defend God to him, and so I would sit there and debate with him, and eventually these debates would lead me to having thoughts of him being less than me because he, hold, he held views that I believed to be incorrect. But what I didn't realize is that he wasn't less than me. Yeah, he, didn't, he wasn't a Christian, and I believe he needed God, but yet he needed God just as much as I did in the end. I, we, had all, we had both fallen short of the glory of God. We have both fallen short of being with him and being unified with him. We are both in rebellion to him, and we both needed Jesus to die for us. And we, I need, and a lot of times we need to realize that we aren't just because somebody holds a different view than us. And it's good, to, it's good to have be firm in your theology and be firm in what you believe and know that what you believe to be true. But yet, just because somebody holds a different belief than us does not make us greater than them. We have all fallen short of the glory of God, and we all need Him. But yeah, I struggled with that too. I, I struggled with that through Ozark too. I was, there's people at Ozark who weren't there for ministry and I thought myself to be better than them because I was going into ministry. But yet I need to realize that we are all on the same ground. We are all unified and we, are all, need, we all need God in order to be with him once again. Mm-hmm. Now, that, like I said, there's nothing wrong with holding your own, hold being firm in your theology and I think that's a great thing but realize that we are not above one another because of our theological beliefs. We are on equal grounds and we have all fallen short of the glory of God. But we need, we need to realize our beliefs and, theo, and the, our theological understanding do not make us better followers of Christ. We all, like I said, we all need him. Um, but yeah, I'm sure many of you have heard that this pridefulness that we struggle with and I'm sure many of you have heard that the pr- easiest way to destroy pride is service. And while this is such a commonly said statement, it is, it is such a true statement. We, service can truly destroy pride. I mean, let's look at Jesus, for example. Jesus, this, despite being the one person that should have any pride, if there ever is pride in the world, he did not have pride. Rather, he bent down on one knee and washed the disciples' feet. He went to the cross for every single one of us, and he died for every single one of us. He healed the sick. He did so many great things that show that he was willing to serve despite him being so far above us. Jesus literally was God, and yet he did not show his pride, and rather he showed that he showed his love through service. And we need to do the same. We need to serve those who we think we are better than. And we will not only see our pride destroyed, but we will also see an impact on those who we serve. We will see unification with them more than we ever have before. Jesus showed this service first on the cross, and he brought peace through the cross, and we need to keep that peace. We are not greater than God, so that we need to, we too need to serve as he serves, and realize that we are not on higher ground than these other, than other people. We are on the same ground. So I challenge you to see the, to see the needs of the people you think you are greater than, and you have more pride, and you have such pride about, and see how you can serve them, and how you can love them, and how you can bless them especially now during this trying time, there's so many ways that we can do that. But we, yeah, we must be prepared and realize that it's going to take some work. Like we're, I mean, service means that we're going to make ourselves uncomfortable. It means that we're going to have to do something that we, do, do, we might not enjoy. And it's going, to be, it's going to take some work on our part. And we need to realize that God wants to help us with that. And we can be unified through hard work and through the help of God. We need, we need to remember that God desires our unification. He desires us to be one body, and he is willing to help us with that. And so let us strive and let us work towards being unified. Let us, let, let it be our mission, especially now during this hard time where the coronavirus is ravaging us. But it's going to be an effort, and we have to make, we have to make every effort, as Paul says, to keep the unity. But let us also realize that Jesus created peace first, and that with that peace, he created peace between us and God. And so now let us create that peace with each other. And unification, in concluding, I just want to share, unification now more than ever is going to be necessary. 
I recently watched a video with um, Ed Stetzer, and I'm sure I'm sure some of you have heard him, some of you might not have. And he was actually at the conference that Jason and I went to, and um, I actually just watched this last night, so I kind of threw it in because I believe it's important. But Ed was showing statistics and showing that the coronavirus, the COVID-19 virus, is just beginning. It, it has it has a lot of potential to get worse. And we need to be unified through that. He said the church, the Surgeon General, he actually shared words from the Surgeon General, and the Surgeon General said, more now than ever, we need the church. The Surgeon General said this, and that is true. And we need to approach this dire time unified. We need to meet the needs of those of the people that we see who are needing. We need to meet the needs of the people, not only in our body but of, of this church, but also people who are in other bodies of other churches and people who are not in a church body. Let us meet their needs. And guys, if we are unified through this COVID-19 virus, if we work together and if we become unified, we will see not our church not weaken, but grow and our church grow stronger. We will, see, we will come out of this COVID-19 virus and we will be closer together. We will be one more than ever. And it might mean making yourself uncomfortable. It might mean having to work for it. It might mean having to get out of your comfort zone and see what people need and what people, and what people um, need during this time. And this might mean this, seeing a need that in the church that somebody has and surrendering to them find, and surrendering to them with money or surrendering to them with something like food or even something stupid like toilet paper during this time. I, I mean, gosh, this whole toilet paper thing is ridiculous. But the virus does not negate our need for unity, but rather it shows that we need it more than ever. Paul, when separated from the church in, in Rome, he said, I long to come to you. I long to be with you. And we should want the same thing. Despite this virus, we should desire to be one. So I encourage you, continue to pray for each other, continue to help each other, continue to serve one another, and continue to be the church to one another, continue to be the body that we know that we are. Let us see, let us see what happens when we truly are unified through this trying time. Guys, I, I just want to challenge you to see what you need to do in order to be unified with the church today. Call people Text people, don't go to their houses because I don't want to see this virus spread. I mean, I'm not encouraging you to go physically see people. But make every attempt and how, and it's with the technology that we have today to truly be one body. Let us be unified and let us make, as Paul said, let us make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Will you pray with me? Dear Holy Father, I know it's been a challenge for me personally. I know it's been a challenge for many people to find this unity within the church this is when we can't be with each other physically and worship with each other every Sunday. I know it's been a struggle with me to be separated from the youth of this church. But God, I pray that you help us realize that just because COVID-19 is here and just because we cannot be with each other physically, that we can be unified, that we can be one body now more than ever. And God, I pray that you will place the the dire need in our hearts to realize that we need this unity and to realize what we can do with this unity. And God, I pray that we will strive towards it, that we will make every effort and that you will help us and encourage us and just empower us to do what we need to do in order to be unified. God, just thank you for this church family and I thank you for their closeness together and I pray that we will be a unified body now more than ever. In Jesus' name.